Good evening, friends. How y'all doing? It's Monday night. I hope you guys have had a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. It's a whole lot easier to start the week if you've had a good weekend, you know. So, we had a pretty good weekend. Um, husband had to work all day Saturday. He um, is the news director, so whenever the station sponsors an event or has something going on, he kind of has to help out or be there to, you know, supervise or something. And um, Montana Fair is going on, which is a pretty big deal here. It's like one of the largest fairs around. So um, tonight is his station, it's like special night. So it's like buy one, get one free, you know, bring a friend type thing. So um, he's got like tons of people out in the field. So he's trying to manage that and everything. So he was out working on stuff all day Saturday. And then on Sunday, yesterday, we kind of played it lazy a bit yesterday. But um, late yesterday afternoon, we can't, went and kind of, you know, watered around the fair just a little bit. Um, then we went to see Bill Engvall. And um, if you're familiar with the blue collar comedy tour from the 90s, you know, Larry the Cable Guy, Ron White, Jeff Foxworthy. Bill Engvall was one of the four that toured the country. And um, good, clean, awesome, hilarious um, comedy. So... We saw him last night, and um, I forgot who opened. Um, Gary Brightwell opened for him, and we—he's evidently been in the business for a long time. But um, he opened, and he was decently funny. But um, Bill Engvall kept us laughing for about an hour and a half or so, and I'm literally, you know, my jaws were hurting so bad when we left because I was just laughing so hard. And that's, you know, of course, a good thing. But um, it's just good to know that, you know, after. 20, 30 years, you know, doing stand-up, he still got it. But, um, and surprisingly, there were only like one or two jokes that he did that we had heard before. So it was all fairly new stuff. So, um, that was quite impressive. We really enjoyed that. Um, so, anyways, before we get started, I want to remind you guys, next Monday is this big solar eclipse. And I received an email yesterday morning, early yesterday morning, from Amazon stating that the glasses that I had purchased, they had not gotten confirmation from the company that they um, were safe, basically. And um, that they were going to issue me a refund, refund and they were, um, suggested I not use them. So with that being said, if you have ordered glasses, I, if I were you, I would um, check. Make sure they haven't been recalled. Um, if you need to do so, buy some because next Monday, I know for um, Billings, it's supposed to be between like 11.23 and 11.27 or so. Um, and that's what time you know. It's supposed to happen, you know, in our area. So um, if I were you guys, check to make sure your glasses are safe. I would hate for you to burn your eyes out and get hurt because you bought some glasses that you thought were okay. So, um, anyway, so that was just, you know, a little safety reminder thing. I've got this weird static. Montana is so dry. It's insane. It doesn't matter what you do, you cannot get rid of static. Um, I'll remind you guys, I have a Pinterest, of course, here on Facebook, Instagram, and I started up a YouTube last week where I download all these videos and put them onto YouTube. So. If you want to go back and look at them later, YouTube is a good place to get them. And you can, of course, share them easily if you would like. So, now, are we ready to get started? Again, if you are hanging out, please say hi. So I know you're here. And, yeah. There we go. Alright, so it is National Cream Sickle Day. Again, I said this a few videos ago. Um, it seems there is a holiday for everything and today is National Cream Sickle Day and the reason why I chose to do it is because I actually found a recipe for a cream sickle martini and I've never made it before so if it sucks I'm sorry <laughs> but we're gonna find out here in a minute um, what you need is triple sec vodka 
orange juice, and creamer. Then, you, of course, you need your shaker with ice, your martini glass, and I use the shot glass because it's got the measuring thing, measuring, you know, measurements on it. So, it's easy for me to do that. And basically, again, like I told you guys, I prefer vodka martinis. I have tried gin martinis over and over and over again, and I just can't like them. There's just there's something wrong with gin. Maybe it's bad gin that I'm trying. I don't know. But vodka-based martinis is where it's at for me. So, um, super simple. Equal parts of everything. So, I'm going to start with vodka. I'm just going to do one part of each because, well, I'm just one person and there is no reason for me to make a ton of it. I've got orange juice one part which I'm guessing is where we get the orange flavor. Got creamer one part which I guess is what makes the cream sickle part of it and then triple sec which helps Kind of balance out all the flavors and it does also give it just a tiny little bit of a, um, you know, citrusy flavor, so. Okay, and move all that out of the way. Of course, seal it up. Shake, shake, shake. Move everything out of the way. And then, of course, pour. And it looks like the inside of a creamsicle. When was the last time you had a creamsicle? I don't even know. I think, I, I mean, I had to have been a child, I think. I don't, don't even know. But an orange creamsicle, whatever. Here we go. That is good. That is super yummy. Don't even taste like, you know, alcohol or anything. But, um... Yes, it's very yummy. Orange creamsicle. Okay, I'm gonna set that to the side. Drink on that while we talk. All right, so tonight's topic, we are chatting about my favorite craft tools. And with any hobby, um, you know, the supplies that you love the most changes of course um most of the time i am doing um paper crafts i love to do like scrapbooking um i like to do um artwork where you know you're cutting up paper and kind of putting it together to make something else paper crafts is kind of you know what i enjoy the most when it comes to crafting but um so most of the so all of the most of the tools that i show you guys are going to be related to my hobby so um of course, if you're into sewing, um, you're going to have a whole new set of um, tools and supplies that you prefer um, over anything else. Jewelry, painting, drawing. Um, again, you're going to have um, specific tools that you prefer, and it probably wouldn't be any of these tools. So, depending on what your hobby is, is what you um, enjoy um, using the most. So, I don't even know where to start because there's like so many cool things. Okay, right, anyways, I have shared this in the past. I have a serious, deep love for these markers. They are Sharpie flip chart markers. And I shared these several videos ago when we did the garage sale signs. They last forever. They um, have nice, thick tips. They are bright, bold colors. They last forever. There is a ton of ink in these things. Now, um, I will advise you that sometimes you can find them at Walmart um, for significantly cheaper than you can at like Hobby Lobby or Office Max or Staples. If you go to Office Max or Staples, you're going to be looking at like $9.99 or $11.99 for a pack of, I think it's eight of them. You get... Um, Let's see, a bunch of colors and then like two blacks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm missing a color here. Anyways, I think you get like eight markers, seven or eight markers, eight, either way, with two blacks. And um, at Walmart, when you can find them, it's like $7.99, $8.99 maybe. But um, 
it's a whole lot cheaper than going to like Staples. Anyways, these are my absolute favorite markers to use when drawing, writing, anything that, um, I, I mean, I sign cards and stuff with these. It's thick tips, but um, if I want bright, bold um, colors, I love them. Um, now, these are also at Walmart, and usually you can find them, I think it's like, I think when I bought these, they were like $4.44. These are also Sharpies. They last forever. Again, I think that they are actually pretty similar to these. But these have finer tips, and again, last forever. And I actually do use these a lot for signing inside of um, greeting cards or writing letters and stuff. These are um, wonderful, wonderful Sharpies, and they last so much longer than um, any other Sharpies that I have used. Now, when it comes to the holidays, like when we're coming up on Christmas, and you want to send out all of those Christmas cards, you can buy sets of the silver and gold. I like using them because they're holiday colors. And again, they last for a long time. They got super awesome tips, and they're really pretty. Also, the reason why I like these is because there is sometimes that I'm using like black poster board or black cardstock, black scrapbook paper, and um, it's very hard to find like a white marker. Or um, I don't like dealing with chalk because that, you know, leaves all the dust everywhere. Um, so using a silver Sharpie on black helps me um, see what I need to do. So markers, those are my favorite markers. And I do kind of have everything scattered here. I thought I had organized it, but I lied. <laughs> lied to myself. Okay, when it comes to um, shapes and stuff, tracing, um, there's a lot of times that you need a star or a square or, you know, a circle or something. And I'm sorry, me sitting here trying to draw a circle, I, it didn't, I, I, I can't do it. I can't even cut a circle. Um, square i mean i want i'm so like just i want things to be precise and <laughs> very detailed and perfect so um for me stencils is a must um these are i think fiskers and you get tons of them this is of course all circles that's all squares because i'm in all honesty i do use circles or squares more often i don't know why i do um, various shapes, it's got a heart, oval, you know, star, whatever. And then, it's just got like decorative things that you would use for like tags or whatever. And I'm not going to lie, a few months ago, I finally realized that these edges, you could trace. Yeah. I don't know why. It took me forever to notice that. But yes, there's a scalloped edge. It's got a really pretty decorative border, um, but they all have different edges that you can use to trace. Yep, it took me a long time to, <laughs> to um, figure that out and to learn that. And then I have this one as well because it's just you can never have the right circle. And sometimes they always say, you know, just find you know like a bowl or a cup. Well, sometimes I need something much smaller than a bowl or a cup, and it's hard to find a circle that I need. So, that works perfectly for me. Now, this next one's going to be kind of weird, because um, a lot of people don't think about it. Unless you are party planning. If you are planning a party for someone, or if you are a teacher and you are hanging something up in your classroom, this is one of my favorite things to use. Fishing line. In fact, I still have my name on it. When I was a um, pre-K teacher, I had my own fishing line that I bought and I kept in my room. And um, I like to use fishing line because you could hang stuff up and you couldn't see, um, you know, what was holding it up in the air. So if you hung like a poster, it just looked like the poster was kind of levitating in the air. Because to me, if you saw the um, yarn or the string or whatever, the streamer, to me it just looked like kind of junky. So using fishing line made it very clean looking. So if you are um, planning a party for someone and you want to hang like balloons or um, 
pom-poms, lanterns, or anything. Fishing line is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful um, choice to use. And best of all, you can get it to where, like this one holds up to 10 pounds. You've got fishing line that holds up to 30 pounds and more. You can get fishing line that holds um, only two pounds. I always get like 10 pounds just because um, in the past if I was hanging up like a massive, you know, post report or massive um, piece of paper, I wanted to have as much support as possible. So fishing line is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful tool. All right, favorite adhesive. Talked about this in the past. Mod Podge. Again, weird word to me. Super weird word. Um, this is gloss. You can get it in matte. You can get it with sparkle. You can get it, I mean, I, they may have, you know, some colors or whatever. You can get some specifically made for photos or whatever. This is a wonderful adhesive. It's almost the consistency of um, Elmer's glue. In fact, it's pretty much like Elmer's glue. Um, it dries super fast, dries clear, and you can use it as a sealant. So after you get done using it as a glue, let's say you know you're doing a paper craft or something, and you're done, you can swipe a coat, a uh, paint a coat of this Mod Podge over it, and it will seal whatever into your art. Mod Podge, favorite. All right, before we get into the last few things, um, drop cloths. I am super weird about a mess. I don't like messing up anything. And um, if I can lay anything out, I'm going to. Um, usually I grab a, um, I go to Dollar Tree and buy a couple boxes of black trash bags and cut the trash bags up so I can spread them out. Um, you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's. You can get a great big roll of this thin, um, I don't want to say craft paper or whatever, but it's kind of what it is. And you can roll off whatever you want to put underneath your um, crafts that you are um, making. That way so you don't do glue or paint anywhere. And then also at Walmart, you can get these bags of, over in the paint section. It's basically, um, if you're painting, you can pull this out. It's a giant roll of it. It's just one long roll. And um, that way so you don't get paint all over. But I typically, you know, I just cut off, you know, a little bit if I only need this much and then lay it up underneath my art. And therefore I don't get any paint or glue or glitter or anything that I do not want all over my carpet or floors or countertops or whatever. So it's all about protecting that stuff. All right, this is typically an office supply, but I use them so much. Plain old binder clips. Plain old, plain old binder clips. I use them to hold, hold cords together. If I have glued something together, let's say it's you know a little bit thicker of an object, um, I've glued buttons to another button or something, and I need them to like stay in place because if you put glue on top of another, um, if you put glue on a button and then put another button on top of it and want them to stay, usually one starts sliding. So if you put a binder clip on it, that holds it in its place. That way, so when it dries, it dries to the way that you want it to. Um, I have hung up stuff to dry this way. I have held stuff up like that. So I've put stuff inside of the clip to, to hold up like that. Um, I have put a tack in the wall. I put a tack in the wall. If I put a tack in the wall, use these little hooks, put on the tack, hang it onto the tack on the wall. That is a great way to keep, like if you have important notes and stuff that you need to keep on hand, just tack on the wall and that hangs there. And then also I have a very large um, shoe organizer that I organize all of my ribbon. And, um, Usually, you know, you get the great big spools of ribbon. As soon as you open it up, the ribbon just never stays into place. I've tried taping everything. I get small binder clips and I roll up the ribbon the way that I want, stick that onto my ribbon, close it up. That way so my ribbon stays rolled up. Just 
just like that. Super simple. All right, my favorite. Now, like I said, I am into paper crafts. Mine is cutting tools. I like um, anything that makes working with paper and cutting paper easier. And of course, a simple paper cutter. Stick your paper in there, slide it down, cuts it perfectly across. You can also get the replacement blades if you need to. Um, just a little tidbit or whatever, if you go to Hobby Lobby to get one of these, um, again, pay attention to the sales because if there is no sale going on this week on um, the stamps and paper cutters and scissors and stuff, guess what? Next week they'll probably be 40 or 50% off. If I were you, wait till then because something like this is going to cost you $19.99, but if you wait till 50% off, you can get it for $10. You can get one smaller than this that does like eight and a half by 11, and then you can end up getting it for like four or five bucks. To me, it the sale is so much worth it. Of course, I mean, if you do have the, um, like a coupon, that's, you know, good, but you just can't use that on the sale. But these paper cutters, wonderful. Now, this is actually a manicure scissors. Manicure scissors. But I use them for paper crafts. A lot of the stuff that um, I've done are very tiny and detailed. And it's very difficult to take a great big pair of scissors and, um, you know, cut out what you need because your scissors are so big and you need something that's this small. So using a pair of manicure scissors, and they are super, so, uh, super sharp. So they are going to do exactly what you need. But a pair of manicure scissors will be your best friend if you are doing anything with like little details and stuff. Now, of course, you have an X-Acto knife. Everybody knows exactly what those are. Just a plain, straight knife that um, you may use to open boxes, you may use to um, cut through anything. Um, I use this one on occasion, but I have two tools that are my absolute favorite. And um, years ago, I did a um, piece of art where I was cutting out like Winnie the Pooh and tiny little bees, and it was a lot of curves, a lot of tiny details, and it was very difficult to even take, you know, the manicure scissors with a tiny piece of paper and cut what I needed. So I went was looking, you know, at Hobby Lobby and Michaels and Joann's, and I actually came across something that has been the biggest lifesaver. It is basically an exacto knife. I don't know if you can see that. But it has got a little blade there on the end, but it swivels. It swivels, it turns. It turns. So you can easily just take it and you don't have to, all you have to do is move your hand and it will turn with you. You don't have to sit here and worry about, you know, getting fancy or anything. So even if you wanted to, you could put that onto a piece of paper, stick that, you know, onto it and easily cut it out and it will follow whatever curve that you um, basically push it on. It is such a lifesaver. It's wonderful. And then, if you've got even smaller details, here is another one. It's got the same kind of blade. But this one works wonderful because you can actually stick your finger in it. And then it allows you to get even more precise, even more detailed, and allow you to do even more precision than you could before. Seriously, this thing was like five bucks on sale. That one was like six or seven bucks on sale. And um, if you do a whole lot of paper crafts, those might be your best friends in the whole widest world. Okay, got a couple more little things. Again, most of mine are paper crafts, but if you sew one of these things you might have seen before, basically it is a mat, a sewing mat, cutting mat. It's super thick and it's meant for you to lay fabric out so you can measure it and you can cut it. 
I lay large sheets of paper on it. I actually have a much larger one. Large sheets of paper on it and cut down to you know what I need. Um, but, I mean, I've had this one for years. And it's still just as good almost as um, when I bought it. So, one of those is perfect. And then also, if it gets dirty, it's super easy to um, clean. And then, one of my favorite rulers is actually, again, another one of those sewing tools, I think. But I use it to um, measure paper and stuff. It goes up to, um, so it actually goes up to 18 inches. I have a much larger one as well. But again, I use it to measure paper. And it's nice and thick. I can see through it. Great tool. Last but not least, if you know anything, oh wait, hold up, one more, sorry. One more cutting tool. It's actually another sewing. It's a rotary cutter. I use it to cut paper, but it's meant, I think, actually to use on fabric. But um, I don't do a whole lot of things with fabric. But this is awesome when you have super thick cardstock or scrapbook paper. All right, now, last but not least, laminator. And you would think that a laminator is expensive, but guess what? This one was bought at Walmart for $19.99. This one will do all eight and a half by 11 paper. And actually it'll do, um, and that's your width. It will actually, um, it comes with eight and a half by 11 pouches, but you can get um, pouches that do um, the eight and a half by 14 sheets or whatever. But a laminator. I love to laminate everything, especially things I've need for a long time. You can buy the packs of thermal pouches that you send through it for a decently priced. It's actually cheaper to probably order them online if you have Amazon Prime. But if I were you, grab a laminator. And real quick to show you guys how awesome these swivel exacto knives are. If you would want to cut something like that out, sitting there with regular scissors would be kind of tasking because, well, I mean, it's curves and stuff. But it took me less than um, like three or four minutes, and of course, they are all tangled up. Less than like three or four minutes, and of course I did a sloppy job with it. Cut that out just with um, the quick little swivel knife. So, with all that being said, those are my favorite, some of my favorite craft tools. Um, there are loads more, but um, if I were to recommend anything, those were the things that I would suggest you getting. Um, things that I love the most, Amanda's favorite things like Oprah or whatever, you get knives, you get markers. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> um, next week, next Monday night, hopefully we will have seen the solar eclipse. It has not rained here in months. I am, it's like Murphy's Law, I'm expecting it to rain next Monday just because we're supposed to be seeing a solar eclipse. Um, anyway though, next Monday, hopefully you guys will share with me um, what you guys saw. And I will be showing you a quick and easy way to make your own ice cream sandwiches. They are super yummy. The ways you can make them are endless. You will love them. So ice cream sandwiches and because solar eclipse we're going to make a Milky Way martini. How's that sound? I'm super excited about this one. I haven't made this one before either, but um, we're gonna make a Milky Way martini and then we're gonna do some ice cream sandwiches. So, I guess that's it y'all. It's Monday night. So hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Send me your suggestions. Um, let me know what you want to see. I'm planning um, September and October, so I'd love to incorporate what you guys suggest. So, I hope you guys have a great evening, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.